This is Johnny Wrestling or Johnny Takeover, as my shirt says. And listen, I want you to listen. Like, we're the ball right now. It's crazy. It's loud. It's hectic. We're in New York City. But I want you to listen to No Hold Bar Network. going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the next podcast episode number 15 right here on the no holds bar network your source for all wwe nxt nxt uk and now home to all elite wrestling coverage you can go follow the twitter or the twitter account for the no holds bar network at nhb network on twitter guys make sure you're following that for all network updates you can also follow us on uh you can follow the show on twitter at uh, the next pod, uh, the next pod is not another next pod. I was going to say the next podcast. But you can follow us there on Twitter. You can follow myself at Real Kyle Masters, and you can also follow uh, my co-host at Michael Chow TV. Guys, welcome to episode fifteen. I'm your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, and CEO of the No Holds Barred Network. And I'm always joined by my other host. He is. The host that runs the West Coast, Hollywood, Michael Chow. What an intro. That was pretty good. But I must say I have a small (laughs) confession to make before we move forward. I did not get to watch NXT (gasps) this week. Gasp. But I do have an excuse. The reason why I did not watch NXT this week is because Stephanie McMahon said I had to go see my doctor. And I said, screw Whoa. that. And Stephanie McMahon said, if you're not going to see your doctor, I'm officially suspending you <gasps> from No Holds Bar Network. It goes no. Kyle, and then it goes to McMahon's. Kyle, and then the McMahon. So I was suspended, and wow. uh, Kyle will just have to fill in the rest. I'm sorry. Okay, well, Michael, it's been nice for, for you to be on the podcast for a while. We'll see you at WrestleMania. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Thank you. Ah, okay. we're just kidding. We just kidding. Ah, yeah. But I actually did not watch the show, guys. So yeah, but, that's so. okay. That's good. I'll fill you in. I'll fill in the gaps thank there. You. But I uh, on a day where I'm worried, I'm just decked out in undisputed era gear today. I got my shirt. I got my my little my little new armband that I got from the Royal Rumble. That I got at the Royal Rumble access. I got the new hat. The undisputed era fitted, or not the fitted the the snapback. Um, But that's okay. I'll fill you in. But, guys, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 15 of the next podcast. If you're new to the show, this is where we talk about mainly the A show in our minds. That is NXT. And we are also we also go a little bit over the main roster. Just a kind of a recap base. Uh, We kind of want to keep everything uh, main roster uh, or NXT based more than the main roster. But we will touch up on things on this show from time to time. We fill in any big news, and then we talk about NXT. And then uh, we also read your fan tweets out there. So if you have any tweets or any questions you have about NXT or the main roster you want to tweet into the show, make sure you are using the hashtag AskTheNext, now spelled N-E-X-T, uh, and then we will be able to answer them for you at the end of the show, which we will be answering at the end of the show today. Um other than that, guys, if you want to listen to us on the go, we are available to listen to on Spotify, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker. Spreaker is the glorious podcast app that we go live every single uh, week on, and all the other shows on the network are, are also on Spreaker. They also use Spreaker as a live platform, except for the AEW show, which is always live on YouTube. And speaking of YouTube, if you want to watch the video versions of this podcast, you can see myself and Michael Chow as well. Go over to YouTube.com slash NHBWR. Hit the subscribe button and the little bell icon for all upload updates. Let you know when we upload a video and whenever we are live with the AEW podcast so for all your network needs please subscribe everywhere and uh, feel free to listen to us on the go whatever is convenient for you uh to listen to us so wow you know kyle <laughs> this isn't monday night raw we don't have three hours here all right I'm so sorry. i gotta i'm working we're condensing this down because you know an hour works it's crazy how much an hour works more than three hours mm. i'm just saying i'm just saying not trying to point any fingers. Monday Night Raw. Uh, yeah, I'm talking to you. 
Raw and your three hours of nonsense garbage every goddamn week. Like this week. <laughs> Look, what the what the hell are they doing on the main roster, man? It's... What are you talking about? <laughs> this fresh start with Road fresh Dog start. and Double J, Double whatever. Oh. Who cares? Why is he here? Oh, I'm I, th- I I didn't know that was current Raw. I thought we we were literally watching. I thought they they, they canceled Raw and put like a retro episode of, oh. of Monday Night Raw on. I didn't know that was current. Wow, I was very mistaken there. I think mm. it was when I think it, it, I knew it. I think I knew something was up when Elias made his way into the segment. I'm like, oh okay, cause this is. I thought this was a recap of like a 1998 Raw, but no, this is current Raw with people that shouldn't be here anymore. How is this getting ratings? <laughs> It's not. It's not working. Obviously, I seen the ratings for this week. I don't know if you seen them, Michael. They're really low. Raw got like a low two point something, and SmackDown, sadly enough, was in what, like a one point eight. And w- it's funny how they get a low rating like that with the now the whole rumors of Fox potentially maybe wanting to cancel the move for SmackDown to go to Fox because of the ratings. But we we don't know. This is all grain of salt. You it's know, a, jibber-jabber it, throughout the community, so... These are people are throwing it out there and saying, hey, listen, Fox has shows on TV that get worse rating, and they cancel it. But they have to understand, number one, this is Fox Sports, and number two, you can't put wrestling on the same level as, say, like a... I don't know, what's a Fox show on right now? The Simpsons, right? Because t- it's it's TV, yeah. and this is sports programming to, to Raw, an account. And Raw is it, the it, longest reigning, or longest television whatever the hell they want to plug up every single time the longest television show episodic television show in history yada 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 yeah 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 well yeah the guys started doing better so mm-hmm. i don't know they do man like the ratings are clearly not showing it even the the product itself is still mediocre like we again we like, we said it for weeks now we we, we told you nothing was going to happen this fresh start was all bullshit we all said it was going to happen. We threw it out there, and Vince, he, when you look at it in the business perspective, Vince only needed the ratings to go up a little bit because it was tanking. It was tanking furthest that you could ever see. When he announced that Vince McMahon was showing up on Raw, people actually tuned in. When he promised all these superstars who haven't been doing much, people are tuning in. It's, it's, it's nothing. Guys, nothing. But I mean, nothing's the, changed. The problem is that they're giving the fault. This is turning into the false hope that they're they're promising all this change to get the views, and it's working. But then they do they do every single time they promise this, they don't they don't live up to their word, and the product eventually goes shit. Like they need to start living up to their word, or else it's never going to work. And I gotta be completely honest. I seriously do not see any type of difference between the big man's handling the show and when Baron Corbin and Paige handled the show. I know everyone hated Baron Corbin, but don't hate on him. I thought he was a good GM. It was the writing. The writing gave the writing gave him just him as a GM, always attacking Braun Strowman. And then if you gave him a storyline where he actually did his job and made matches instead of actually being a GM slash wrestler at the same mm-hmm. time. It would actually work. I actually like Barrett Corbin. I actually like him in his new role. And it's just this whole McMahon thing is not working. No. The segment with Stephanie McMahon and Becky Lynch was seriously some of the worst things I've seen. And I like Becky Lynch. I did not like Stephanie's part. And to be quite honestly, I did not like Becky's participation in that segment too. It was off. So Hated. what's going on? Because she's appearing on both shows. Like, Is, is this going to be a trend every year that the Royal Rumble winner appears on both shows? Or like, well, are they? Are they? Is it? Are we? Are we finally getting the beginning of the end of the brand split? Well, here's the. Uh, so here's the thing. They keep thinking of these crazy excuses. So Becky was Becky and Daniel Bryan was on Raw to choose their opponent for WrestleMania, which I thought was a horrible idea. They should not have chosen their opponents. You should have just let them. You know, keep thinking about it. Tease something that Seth Rollins might pick Daniel Bryan. You know, tease something that Becky might pick Oscar. But no. They straight up went straight for it. Seth picked Lesnar and Becky picked Ronda because their ratings were taking. They need people to buy tickets to WrestleMania. And by doing this, you have to explain why Lesnar and Seth Rollins are not going to feud, which I hear is not so good because Rollins has a back injury. I hear Lesnar's not scheduled for fast lane or an elimination chamber. How are you going to explain all this? And then on Becky's side, they basically said, well, Becky attacks Stephanie McMahon. She's suspended. She's out of here. The woman that people tune in to watch, she's suspended. 
maybe if they had given us what we wanted at the Royal Rumble, I'm just saying, and if we talk about the men's side of it, maybe if Lesnar wasn't fucking Universal Champion, and maybe what? Let's see, if Finn Balor was Universal Champion, you could literally have a different program with him and do something else. Do something different. Stop giving us the same fucking crap every single WrestleMania because now it's just, you can predict the WrestleMania main event halfway through the year before. Brock Lesnar shouldn't be oh it shouldn't always revolve around Brock Lesnar and a person we are typically one of like five people that will always be in that main event. It shouldn't be like that. They should be if they wanted to promise on this fresh start bullshit now and I'm gonna call it bullshit, they have had to have done the move to put the Universal Championship on someone else at the Royal Rumble. That would have been the the prime spot and to finally show people, okay, they're serious about changing the product and getting people to start watching and getting this product under control and better. Because now that it's still on Lesnar, we're still getting the same bull crap every other WrestleMania season we've had for the past couple of years. What's the difference from any other year right now? Like, I, yeah, of course, Seth Rollins deserves to be here because, you know, he's right now out of the roster, should be at the top. But now you're running into the problems like this where there's rumors of injury and stuff like that. But you, you should have had a plan B ready to go and it should have already been activated right now. They're just playing and waiting around. Like this is not getting people hyped for WrestleMania. It, you shouldn't be having these low of ratings on the road to WrestleMania. You should not. As soon as the Rumble starts until WrestleMania, they should be at its peak. But well, it looks like it looks like they have a plan. It was mentioned in the in the chat room by I believe by Cuba Girl One Two Five. They have now announced, and Kyle, you might be a little bit happy because it involves you since you're Canadian. The first ever international superstar shakeup. What? what? Have you heard of it? <laughs> no, okay, I okay. Like I saw some, but I thought it was a joke. Okay. No, okay, so here's the thing. And you're going to think this is stupid. But bear in mind, hey, you're Canadian. You should appreciate the fact it's being held in Canada. This is going to play a big part on why it's the international (laughs) superstar shakeup. When I heard people were reporting that WWE was planning on having a international superstar shakeup, I thought, oh, is this this is stupid? Is it going to be like only international superstars get traded to the brands? This is stupid. But what I heard was... And by the way, this is the actual information that, Kyle, the week after WrestleMania, I believe is – I might be wrong, guys. Go check the calendar. I think it's um, April 15 and 16, which is the Monday – the Monday Night Raw and SmackDown the week after WrestleMania. Yeah, not the the shows after, but the ones at the week after that. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The week after. They're going to have the Superstar Shake-Up on a Monday Night Raw and a a, uh, SmackDown Live, and both shows take place in – Canada. That's why it's called the International Superstar wow. Shakeup because it's taking place in a different country. They're so That's it. lame. They're That's so... why it's called the International because it's being held in another country, which this isn't an insult. I always thought of Canada as part of the United States. So just saying that if they, okay, if they had the Superstar Shakeup in Japan, I'd be like, okay, this International Shakeup, International, right? But Canada? You're at Canada all the time. They're going to be They're there for what? So Survivor lame. Series? They're so lame. <laughs> Honestly, they're so lame. But to get back to it, Kyle, so they're mixing things up again. And might I add, Kyle, Superstar Shakeup we had last year did absolutely nothing. All the NXT call-ups got shitted on. Nothing's changed. The six NXT call-ups. Lars Sullivan, that guy's out of here. I'm sorry. I, I, I hope the guy well for his his mental health, but I don't know what's going on here. All the NXT superstars have been not mm-hmm. been doing so good. EC3 got a win over, oh, what, Dean Ambrose, the guy who's leaving? Who cares? I don't know. So, like, out of both shows this week, nothing really much that I've seen really happened um, except the stuff with Becky getting suspended on Raw, slapping Triple H in the face on SmackDown. They're... And there's rumors are saying that oh they're trying to do Becky and Stephanie to be this generation still oh, no, no, no. and Vince. Please. Like, they really oh. don't need to be copying that, but they, I guess they are. I mean... And then we get this, like, the one thing I noticed that would happen on SmackDown was so stupid, this, like, Asuka vignette. And I'm like, why? For a girl who you've already ruined since you brought her up? You can't just all of a sudden make her be this destructive force and give her a vignette after you've killed her for the last year. Don't give me this shit. Like, I, I really That really ticked me off when I seen that. I'm like, okay, now you're going to give this whole, like, destructive path that Asuka's done. 
that should have been done when she got called up, and you should have kept her undefeated. There's no point in doing it now. It doesn't mean anything. They they have a huge missed opportunity. People are okay. The huge thing right now is that Becky Lynch won the World Rumble. Incredibly happy for her. She totally deserves it. But people are not talking about the fact that Asuka defeated Becky Lynch clean at the Royal Rumble. Mm-hmm. Asuka should be going out on SmackDown and saying, hey, I know you chose Ronda Rousey, but I beat you. You should be choosing me. Yeah. You know what I mean? So she's like, I, I've beaten everyone. Yes, my streak is over. But the person who won the Royal Rumble, I beat. I can't be defeated. No one's going to defeat me. And then whatever. Throw Charlotte in there. and It's... I think it's safe to say the main focus on Becky what do you and Ronda. Gonna do? Like, what, what do you think Oscar's going to do at the WrestleMania? Like, what do they do? Th- I can't really see what the path is going to be, and I really hope it's not like a Carmella. Like, that's just going to be <laughs> flat as hell. <laughs> the safe bet, honestly, I mean, depending on if you like Charlotte or Oscar or whoever, is but safe bet keep Charlotte out of the triple threat against Ronda Rousey and, uh, and Becky. Have Charlotte versus Asuka part two for a rematch. You, yeah. Oh, yeah, you, you go you, to the direction you said last week. I like yeah, that. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You know, that creative direction was good. If Charlotte can't get Ronda Rousey's title, then she could go. She should go after Asuka mm-hmm. and be like, hey, I beat Becky Lynch before. I beat you at WrestleMania. I ended your streak, and now I'm going to take your title. If I can't get Ronda Rousey's title, I'll take mm-hmm. your title. But they're not going to do that. Asuka didn't even appear on SmackDown. We got the stupid vintage. And then everything with Becky Lynch and Ronda. Ronda's getting worse every single week. I don't know what to say. <laughs> I, I had faith in her. Maybe, I think it may be good for her that she's leaving, <laughs> to be honest. She's like, getting she's getting booed, and it's getting worse and worse mm-hmm. every week. And, and I talked about it very briefly last week, and it's going to be very quick this week. You know, I said that I didn't. I, I'm starting to get off the Ronda Rousey band, bandwagon because she's getting way too cocky. She she gave a promo against Becky Lynch where she says, "Any ring I step in is mine. The dirt I walk on, it's my dirt, or whatever the hell she my, she says." This is my dirt. She might as well come out here and say, "This is my yard now." I don't care. But last week, and they're booking her way too over. Uh, she went up basically the, Ro- the Ronda Empire. The Ronda Empire, Ronda, the RR, but um, the RE, but um, so as they booked Ronda Rousey taking on the entire members of the Riot Squad, she beat Liv, T- Liv Morgan, no problem. And then after she beat Liv Morgan, I want to let you know any other superstar would get in trouble for doing this because I'm pretty sure she went off script. She said, "Oh yeah, I beat you," and she said, "What? Who else wants them? Because all you fans here are booing me. Who wants them?" And I'm like, "Oh, look at this cocky." person right here you know what i mean she's getting <laughs> upset that the fans are booing her she's taking it out on the fans now she's trying to get all tough and of course Ooh. sarah logan goes in there and for those of you in the live chat or anyone listening right now who saw it, she said one of the worst lines ever she cannot improv at all she said sarah logan come on what are you gonna do cut me like you do one of your rabbits i'm like what the hell is this Paul Heyman, are you helping her for promos what are you gonna do cut me like one of your rabbits what does that even mean <laughs> I guess you're stereotyping Sarah Logan that she she's in the forest and that she has bunnies in a farm and that she scalps rabbits. I don't know, but it's 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 the worst. It's the worst. Let's move on. Ron is getting worse every single week. I don't know how they can get. What's the that. only plus here? Dan O'Brien's new championship. Like, <laughs> like it's in there. If you guys are watching YouTube, uh, YouTube version, I'm like you can see down below. I've added Daniel Bryan to the layout there in his new championship belt. And I mean that thing looks pretty sick. I the, the my favorite part of the whole belt is the background behind the Derby logo, like the whole wood finish. That's probably my favorite part. And like the whole belt strap is made out of hemp material, and it's. I guess it's all right. This whole new Daniel Bryan thing. I think what people really want to know is what the hell is what Eric Rowan like. It's <laughs> did they really need to do that? I mean, in a way, I do agree with it. But then, uh, you know, how long is this hemp belt gonna last? Is, is, I don't even think Daniel Bryan's going to be defending it at the Elimination Chamber. Oh, he is defending it. Oh, he is? Oh, okay, uh, so they it, announced it, that? They announced it on this way. I can tell you that one of the highlights, and I'm actually pretty excited. So uh, there was a match. I forgot who was in the main event, but every, basically everyone who wanted a shot okay, at Daniel yeah, Bryan's title like five of them. ran he out was there. Like, he yeah. was like yelling. He was on the mic like yelling as they were all fighting each other. I was like, what the fuck is this? I quickly see it and I turned it off. No one deserves No one deserves an opportunity. Mm-hmm. No one's going to get an opportunity for me. And, of course, Triple H appeared on the monitor and said, he said, uh, let's see here, uh, Daniel Bryan. Oh, yeah. uh, 
Doom. Ugh. <laughs> you're not gonna defend that title. Ugh. You're gonna defy. You're gonna defend it against everyone. Ugh. And of course, the crotch shot. Sorry, guys. Yeah. But uh, so there you go. So I'm kind. I'm kind of excited. Uh, more so that Mustafa Ali is getting a chance. So it's gonna be Daniel Bryan versus Mustafa Ali, Randy Orton, Samoa Joe, Jeff Hardy, and AJ Styles in the Elimination Chamber. I'm no. actually looking forward to that. No, do you think there's a chance here that we're gonna get a new champion, or is Daniel Bryan? Somehow going to have Eric Rowan get into the match to help him win. Or this is going to be where Bray Wyatt appears. Or Luke. I've, I've, get- I've read a couple of theories already, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, it's kind of typical WWE. We're not going to get what we want, so we might as well just start thinking of ways that are so typical WWE, because that's literally what 95% is probably going to happen. Well, I, I got a question for you, Kyle, and I want you to think very, very hard. It's a tough question because it's going to hit you like, okay, what's going on here? Looking at the roster right now, we don't want to repeat. We don't want Daniel Brown versus AJ Styles for a third or fourth time. Looking at the roster right now and knowing the fact that Seth Rollins did not choose Daniel Bryan to face at WrestleMania, if Daniel Bryan wins, who is he going to face at WrestleMania? Because look at everyone else. Daniel Bryan versus Randy Orton is boring. Mm-hmm. It wasn't boring to them last year but the, or, or the year before, but who is it going to be? Daniel Bryan. You have to make a case. Like if it's not going to be anyone in the chamber – then you, the the, per, the new person's gonna have to make a case, and there, there has to be a reason why. Because, and it, that goes the same for with someone in the chamber. They're they're gonna have to think of a reason why this person needs or get, it deserves another title match, whether they do a number one contender the week after or something, or they do something at Fastlane. Like to me, I, it kind of seems like they're gonna do something at Fastlane. Like we're not gonna have a solidified number one contender in, a, in like a WrestleMania match until Fastlane. I think Fastlane, there's going to be like a number one contenders match to see who d- faces Daniel Bryan for the championship. That's just me. If I was doing a fresh start, I'd do it that way. But knowing WWE, we're going to get our match already at the chamber, and Daniel Bryan's going to win with by Luke Harper or Bray Wyatt appearing, and then whoever they screw over is going to get – that's the person that's going to face Daniel Bryan at WrestleMania. That's the WWE way, and I think that's the way they're going to go. That's a very smart idea, and I got to tell you, if they're doing fast lane and they're going to do a number one contendership match, you already know who's going to win. It's the new Dirt You think so? <laughs> of course. He's going to pop in and say, did someone say number one contender? I'm in, like Seen he did the other Brian. year. Yeah, I saw that rumor a while back. Why not? And mentioned but, it the other week. And yeah. But, but, I I just want to say, because here's the thing. We already know that Becky versus uh, Ron is going to be the main attraction. And second more, we already know that Lesnar versus Ron is going to be the second main attraction. The WWE Championship, I love Daniel Bryan. I love the WWE title. And I love SmackDown. But it's it's not going to be as big of a match. If they end up doing Daniel Bryan versus Mustafa Ali, I'd be okay with it. Because we already know the WWE title is not going to be the highlight of the night. They should so. do that, man. They could do a whole, like, not, it's, it goes back to what I said in my prediction. They can do a whole underdog thing with Mustafa Ali and then Brian bringing up like oh I was in your spot before and I won it but then the authority re- took that away from me don't think they do it to you again just like they did it to me and they can do something like that and then Mustafa Ali can say well you know there's a difference between me and you there I'm better than I was better than you you know they could do something with that and I think that would be the smart way to do it but again Michael we obviously <laughs> can book a better show from what they're doing and I really don't expect them to go in our direction but mm. if they do you heard it here first, guys. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so that's kind of like the main roster recap. Really, don't want to talk much else about it. So, uh, before nope. we get into the uh, <laughs> before we get into the A show review, the NXT review, we're just going to quickly uh, transition here to our sponsor of the No Holds by Network, and that is Extreme Wrestling Shirts dot com. Guys, they, these guys specialize in pro wrestling and MMA apparel with over fifty thousand. T-shirts, sweatshirts, costumes, DVDs, pendants in stock. And guess what? You, as you can see there on the screen, guys, you can use the promo code NOHOLDS at checkout and save 10% on your order. That's right, 10%. A perfect 10%. And one lucky fan per month that uses this code will receive a free gift from Extreme Wrestling Shirts along with their order. So make sure you guys go check out the official sponsor of the No Holds Bar Network, ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com. Also, ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to go show some love to the Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. These guys make a fantastic line of wrestling clothing. 
Uh, for, and you guys, if you're looking at the screen, you have such superstars as Kevin Nash, Eugene, Jake the Snake Roberts, and uh, I just forgot her name already. But uh, she is a well-known indie star. Uh, she's wearing the collar and elbow shirt, guys. But we have a code for you guys to use. And that is code JUMBO on checkout. Save 10% on your order. And that is given by our network fan, Jimmy the Referee. <laughs> the Referee Jimmy. He's given us a code for you guys to use. So use code JUMBO and you can save 10% on that. So now that's all, all the way, guys. Let's talk about the A show. Ooh. <laughs> of well, basically the A show in our minds, and that is NXT. Yes, the NXT chants are raining down upon us, Michael. And we're here to talk about NXT. And basically, this week, guys, was the first set of tapings. So the first show for the next uh, set of couple of week tapings uh, for NXT. And it was hot. They started off really hot. It was a really good show. Uh, we had. Uh, in a way, we had four matches, and we'll get to that when we get to that. But uh, really, we had three uh, announced matches with the main event of the six-woman tag team match between Io Shirai, Kari Zane, and Bianca Belair versus three out of the four horsewomen, uh, Shayna Baszler, Jasmine Duke, and Maria Shafir. Um, mm. So uh, that was the main event for this show this week. I thought it was a solid show this week. Um, and as you see... What I named the episode North American Dream is going to tie in all into the opening of NXT uh, this week. And that is uh, we get the opening of NXT with Johnny Gargano. None other than Johnny Champion opening up NXT. Crowd giving him actually a really good ovation here. Uh, and, and, and starting the uh, – well, as he's walking down, he sees all the like those little white signs. He grabs it. And the little white signs say Johnny Champion on it. So uh, and the whole crowd giving him a uh, Johnny uh, Champion uh, chant. Uh, he says he likes the way that sounds. Says him and the fans deserve this. And he proved it when he won the North American Championship at NXT TakeOver. So he was getting a pretty good reaction here, Michael. And uh, But he was also getting, like I'd say, like 30% of the crowd was uh, still chanting Johnny Failure. And still against Johnny Gargano. So, uh, yeah, he's won over with some of the crowd. But then he's still going to have those people who are all the way back to... Uh, and won't forget what he did to Aleister Black and uh, almost joining the dark side here. And showing his, his darker side. So, uh, he's, still, he's still got that 30% hate on him. It's so funny. Like, it's... it's- it's he's a he's a tweener like he does heal stuff but he's good to the fans you know it's it's weird and just for he's, network purposes yeah. i can't i can't say he's a failure because you know he gave us that awesome plug in the beginning of the mm-hmm. intro. So i'm i have to I, and i am a johnny gargano fan i'm a huge johnny gargano fan uh, i went and bought the uh, johnny takeover t-shirt while i was in uh, the, the royal rumble access store too so uh, I've been a big Johnny Gargano fan ever since he's been in NXT, so uh, I got to support him as well. But I'm, I'm liking this new Johnny Gargano, man. I, I'm really liking it. So uh, as he's saying that, <laughs> Tommaso Ciampa interrupts, and I'm like, oh, what's this? And then Johnny's just got like this, like again, his deer in the headlights face, just like doesn't know what to do. Um, and, you know, it's basically the face he had when whenever Ciampa comes out, he always stares at him, going like, you know, he's he's just stuck in this trance. So Chompa's coming out. He gets in the mic and he says, basically saying that uh, now that they're both champions, they can be together and take off and basically take mm-hmm. over the entire world. Uh, a couple of DIY chants, but uh, basically, like Chompa is extending his hand, going, "We you know we're both the same now, Johnny. Like we're both champions, and now we can take over together." Uh, Velveteen Dream then interrupts. Uh, and he comes out to a nice uh, ovation, uh, big velveteen, tra- uh, big velveteen chants. Uh, he says it's not about these two. Like, this is cute, but it's not about you two. It's about the man who stole the show at Takeover just for showing up. Uh, Ooh. Then he, uh, yeah, that's exactly what the crowd did. <laughs> uh, he talks about winning the uh, Worlds Collide tournament. And uh, which was actually pretty good. If you guys haven't missed it, I'd suggest you go back and watch it. The finals was a really good match. Um, and he says, guess who he's going to choose? And at this point, he's all he's down the ramp where Ciampa is, and he's standing right in the Ciampa's face, and it, like there's a big stare down between these two. And uh, he goes, then he gets on the mic and goes, you're going to need to back up because the dream is over you. Yeah. He gets into the ring 
and said he, that he wants Johnny Gargano. So uh, uh. basically, <laughs> you you want him to face Trumpa, didn't you? Well, no. Okay, okay. Here's the thing. I I would love to see uh, Dream take on Gargano, but if I can give you guys an example, right? This is like the Royal Rumble winner coming out here, and we have Brock Lesnar and we have Daniel Bryan standing in the ring. And Seth Rollins says, uh, let's see here. Brock Lesnar? Okay. Uh, let's see here. Daniel Bryant? Okay. You know what? Forget that. I'm going to go ahead and face uh, our troop for the United States Championship. Because why go after the hugest prize in this, in this company when I can go off the middle title? So... I- <laughs> This brings up the question, what? Michael. What, what was the best? What was the best? Like that, the whole thing where you're saying like the Royal Rumble winner comes out and picks a champion. I think the best segment of that happening was back when Undertaker won the Royal Rumble. Yeah, he came out and there was John Cena, Batista, and Bobby Lashley, and he yep. does a stare down with each one. Everyone's like, "Oh my god, can you imagine if he picks Bobby Lashley for the ECW title?" Everyone wanted that to happen. <laughs> They're like, "Oh my god, pick Bobby Lashley." <laughs> I gotta be completely honest. I remember watching that live. I actually wanted him to challenge John Cena for the yeah. WWE Championship. Yeah, because that was but... a dream match that, that needed to happen. Even then, like it was around that time when everyone finally said, "Okay, John Cena and Taker need to face each other at WrestleMania," and it was not until last year where we kind of got it. But anyways, they um... they needed they need to do this every single year. Can you imagine if they did it this year? Right, Seth Rollins is coming down, and who in the ring is Lesnar? Because they paid him probably fifty thousand that night. Daniel Bryan. <laughs> And Tommaso Ciampa all standing oh, in the man. ring. Can you yeah. imagine that? And then tune over to the other side. We get Becky Lynch, who won the Royal Rumble, right? She comes down here. We have Asuka, who beat her the previous night, by the way. Mm-hmm. We have Ronda Rousey. And we have Shayna Baszler, two mm-hmm. out of the four horsewomen. And Becky is looking at Shayna. She's looking four. at Ronda. Yeah. yeah, it would be great. They need to do this every year. But they don't. But what do we know? What do we know about good What do we know about good television? We know nothing. Oh. We're, <laughs> hey, what is AEW? We're just marks. On? We're just, what, we're what just marks. A- we don't know anything. <laughs> what is AEW on? <laughs> oh man. Anyway, so uh, he picked jo- he picks Johnny Gargano. Uh, take his title chant starts. So the crowd's now kind of turned way over to Velveteen Dream. Johnny replies back uh, and says basically like, while you were in the crowd at TakeOver, he was putting up another match of the year candidate. And while you were doing nothing on Sunday, I was representing NXT and the fans in the Royal Rumble match. So basically he's saying like, you know, like you, you, you may say you have stole the show at TakeOver, but I did this and I did that. You know, I did stuff way more than you. And he go basically says, you want to challenge me? I accept. So <laughs> Velveteen Dream gets in his face and goes, Dream is glad you accept, but he's going to wonder, is it going to be Johnny Champion he faces or Johnny Jackass? And the whole crowd is uh. chanting Johnny Jackass. <laughs> and it was pretty intense, man. Like, it was very, very, very intense. And then Johnny kind of just slips out of the ring, walks up the ramp, and then has another stare down with Tommaso Ciampa. And then mm. Ciampa just kind of gives, like, the, well, well, this is your problem now kind of look and walks away. <laughs> yeah, like, basically like that. It's like, like I'm, I'm not... This is not me, man. This is all you. So, um, and there was a DIY chant with uh, him, look, them looking at each other again. So, pretty interesting opening segment to NXT this week, man. That was uh, it was very good, man. Just main roster, main roster. Just take fucking notes here, man. Like it's it's that simple. They they get it. They, that was like the best opening segment that we that that has been an opening segment that the main roster can ever produce. Like I don't think that the main roster ever produced that at all in 2018. So. Anyways, um, yeah, so that was a pretty good opening segment. Next, we had uh, uh, Jackson Riker, one of the mm. members of the uh, Forgotten Sons. Yes, the uh, Caucasian so the, Batista. Yeah, so basically the, the crazy, <laughs> really jacked motherfucking one. This guy is huge, man. This, I think this guy literally has some big guy potential here. Like Just from watching him in the ring, like it wasn't that – Long of a match, but just you, you kind of look at him and go, okay, this guy's got the potential that you know Vince obviously is going to like, and uh, the, the 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 officials up on the main roster are obviously going to like. He's got that that potential, although he's mm-hmm. not really getting a lot uh, a lot over in NXT. Um, it's weird. I mean, the Forgotten Sons, I think they're going to get there. I think they just need a little bit of a building, uh, which I think that's what they're doing with them. Uh, so he faces this guy who had his own entrance as well. 
named Monsoor. And it's just a generic 2K19 looking guy. And they're given like a little background story on him as he's making his entrance. Apparently he's a he's a uh, uh, a performance center camp impressed talent that's getting his an NXT match because they liked what he's done. That's the story behind him, and he's like an Arab one. I guess he come. They're saying like he comes from a place where there is no entertainment and there is no TV and there is no this. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool, okay. I'm like, okay, maybe we're gonna actually get to get a little bit of a showing. No, we literally got a 30 second match, a quick sit down choke slam, and that's all she wrote. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's not his fault. He comes from a place that doesn't have TV. He doesn't yeah. know what NXT is. Yeah, What's wrestling? Like, who, who's Jackson Riker? I don't even know who this guy is. He must what? be just some jobber. Oh, I'm gonna beat him. My <laughs> Monsoor, my goodness. Literally, right. M O O N S U R. What? Monsoor, but I think they're, they're saying Monsoor, Monsieur. I don't fucking oh, know. They're, whatever. He was M O O. It sounds like the writers literally were typing one day late night and they fell asleep on the keyboard and it just went M O O O O. He was a sewer. Mon nobody. Oh, <laughs> like, my goodness. Uh, anyways, um, yeah, quick sit down, choke slam. That was it. There's a the one cool move where like, he tried to do like a diving move off the top and like he got caught midair and he got like speared midair, then down. And then, you know, that kind of was the end of it. So, anyways, uh, after the match, Monsoor kind of brings him back in the ring, gives him another choke slam, and then the Forgotten Sons are, like, holding him back as he gets goes into, like, this, like, roid rage kind of thing. Like, his eyes wide open, going, Rrr! like, he's going to literally, like, kill the guy. So, that was it. I'm like, okay, maybe I thought maybe we would get, like, a, a tag team feud built, in, built here, like, some sort of... Uh, another team coming to save the jobber, but no, we had nothing. That was it. And I'm like, okay, this was kind of useless. We already know no, who no. the Forgotten Sons are. Like, there was already hype behind these guys. There was, we we know about them. This really, in my eyes, wasn't needed, especially because how do you build a, a this this jobber up and give him an entrance when he only lasts like 30 seconds? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so again, NXT is not always perfect, and we we stress this enough that we're not massive NXT marks like we are, but we're not, like, you know, defending their, and say, like, they're the most perfect thing in the entire world. They're just our favorite brand because they actually produce good television. But sometimes, you know, they make mistakes like this. I thought, honestly, this was a shitty segment and really wasn't needed. So mm. um, that was the end of that. Um, we'll move on here. They had a backstage promo. This was actually pretty cool. So it, <laughs> corny at time, I, I guess some people would say. Um, so Ricochet is having a little photo shoot you can see in the background. Like, you know, those where they're in full ring gear, white screens everywhere, kind of, you know, a bunch of photos taking their poses. Usually that happens with with, a, with someone with a championship. To me, I thought, I'm like, okay, why are they doing that if he doesn't have a belt? I'm and like, he okay. lost. And he lost. So I'm like, okay, whatever. So Kathy Kelly's sitting there going, uh, basically waiting to see if he, she can get a word with Ricochet about uh, this uh about Velveteen Dream challenging uh, Gargano for their, his old championship. Adam Cole interrupts uh, Kathy Kelly and says, no, 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 the only person you want to be talking to and and, uh, and talking to is Adam Cole, baby. Uh, Ricochet is just, just one trick pony type of wrestler. Ricochet overhears this, comes up, but before he can say anything, Adam Cole says, man, nah, man, it's okay. All, of us, all I was saying is that you're now at the back of the line for the North American Championship. You lost it. Adam's Cole, Adam Cole has his name written all over that championship. Ricochet rebuttals back with uh, basically saying, like, um, as I recall it, I beat you for that championship. So maybe you are at the back of that line. And then uh, Ricochet goes, how about we uh, prove this and uh, me and you go one-on-one next week to find out who is deserving more for that championship. So later announced in the show that these guys, huge match next week. Adam Cole is versus Ricochet. Take my goddamn money, man. Like, we're already getting, like, a huge... Main event star match next week, uh, Adam Cole versus Ricochet. But, you know, obviously it's a regular television match. We're probably going to get a good match out of it, but don't count out his Undisputed Era boys to be uh, some determining factor in this match. But both these guys are going number or one-on-one on next week's episode of NXT. Um, a lot of hype for their considered middleweight belt um, and nothing going for the NXT championship. You know I mean? No build I for thought, that. Yeah, because I thought this was going towards that main championship. But this plays into what they also announced during that time. So later mm-hmm. on the night, they also announced that in two weeks, mm-hmm. Gargano and Dream are facing each other for the North American championship. 
So they're not wasting any time with that. So now I'm going, okay, so this main championship is going to have a build somehow. This is all going to tie together. Maybe, just maybe, my prediction of the uh, hell, Armageddon Hell in the Cell between all six of those guys for both championships or maybe even a ladder match for both championships is going to happen. I think something is going to happen here where it's going to tie in everybody together. Gargano... Uh, uh, Champa, Velveteen Dream, Adam Cole, Ricochet, and I bet you if it's not just five, Aleister Black finds his way into it to make it for the sixth. So something's going to happen here because for them not to have done anything with the championship here and have already like four guys over one title and no one did anything with Champa, it's weird. Like it makes you, th- you're sitting here thinking, okay, why was this promo done all over the North American Championship? It would have made sense for these guys to try to go after Champa now, now that Velveteen Dream kind of has a thing with Gargano. But now the fact that they're doing this championship match in two weeks. No, yeah, your brain starts to work here. Now you're trying to think of outcomes. What's going to happen by the time we hit uh, WrestleMania or Takeover New York? So, mm-hmm. um, and we and this is great because NXT likes to slow build things, and it always ends up working in the end. So, still got two months away. So this is going to be very interesting what they do with the next uh, couple of tapings here. So, um, anyways, uh, we'll move on. Uh, like I said, they announced Gargano and Dream for the North American Championship. <laughs> and then we got something here, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, <laughs> we had Drew Gulak appear in NXT. Uh, and this is uh, uh, not your favorite Gulak, Michael. This is the serious the, Gulak. Uh, no PowerPoint presentations no, on NXT? No, no PowerPoint presentations. Mm. No, no. Just uh, that we got Miss Captain Serious Gulak. So uh, he uh, makes his entrance. And I'm going, okay, who's this guy going to face? He's going to face. I'm guessing like a Luis Mendoza or uh, Keith Lee or like a Cassius Ono. No, 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 no. Part two, Mansoor comes down again. Ask no. for another match. It wasn't Mansoor, but it was another new <laughs> talent. And I'm going, okay, this one, I thought Mansoor was pretty bad. I don't know what's going on with this. There's a lot of hype behind this guy. I can kind of see it, but. We'll see. To me, it's a we'll see thing. So this guy, his name, uh, I this uh, his name it, it gets me a lot, Michael. His name is Eric Bugenhagen. Um, so he comes out. He's got like the long. He's kind of look like a rock and roll guy. He's got the long hair that's tight in the back man bun, but he's got the headband and it's a bright green headband. He's got the 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 mustache. Like a rock star 80s mustache. And he's in like macho man kind of looking tights. And he's making his entrance. And he's literally his whole entrance. He's doing the air guitar, the air drums, and the air keyboard on the ropes. And, and like at first people were like, what the fuck? And then the crowd started getting behind this guy. Then like they were clapping. Then like his entrance was very long, like playing all the different instruments. And then when his music stopped, this guy got a standing ovation. <laughs> this guy got a standing ovation. I'm going, what the fuck is this? this Gulak's exact... there going, what the hell am I looking at? This is exactly um, what Vince is looking for. And so. I, back in my head, I'm like, okay, I, this they're, they're building him up to. Apparently, they're saying it in the, the intro, Ronaldo and uh, uh, McGinnis are saying that he was apparently a two-time wrestling champion from his uh, high, from his uh, college. So I'm like, okay, this is something. Maybe we're going to get some, a Musa out of him. We got like two – this is a very quick match. We got like two things out of him. One, he – it was – he has this like high pitched voice, like like the eighties rock high pitch, like ah! like you know what I mean. He does that a lot. So he had the abdominal stretch, if you can picture that, the standing abdominal stretch on Gulak, and he was like and air, guitar? air guitaring it. He was oh. air guitaring him, like but he was like picking it, like like he was air. Like, <laughs> but then Gulak, you know, master submission reverses that. He did like a a uh, normal wrestling takedown as well earlier in the match. I'm like, okay, that's great. I was seeing something out of him, but you know. Gulak eventually beats him. Game over. He locked in the Gulak. And uh, he got on the mic. He cuts a promo and says, I come all the way from 205 Live, best submission wrestler in the world, and you give me this in NXT? This is what I get when I come here down to NXT? <laughs> this is your very best? And then he kind of makes an open challenge. He's like, he called, wait, he called uh, Bugenhagen a Ben Stiller dodgeball looking wannabe. <laughs> oh. Yeah, because uh, he basically had the same mustache and kind of looked like Ben Stiller from Dodgeball. It was kind of I, I got while well, he was saying that it was it was uh, it was it was funny. But anyways, he uh, basically gives an open challenge. Crowd's already chanting "bro," and obviously Matt Riddle's music hits, and uh, the bro comes out, the king of bros. 
Uh, he cuts a little bit of a promo on Drew Gulak, and he says, uh, if this is what you think of NXT, then you can leave, or how about I just make you tap out of that ring? Uh, Gulak says, come down here and make my day. So now we have another match, another impromptu Ooh. match. Gulag versus Riddle. I'm like, okay. So two guys that are known for their submission-based wrestling going at it. And that's how the beginning of the match started. But this match was good. If you guys missed this match, go back and watch Riddle and Gulag. Very, very heavy submission-based match. Lots of transitioning. Lots of crazy submission moves. And when these guys came down to the strikes, very, very tough and hard against each other. This was a very, very physical match. I enjoyed this match. Uh, this is like probably the best NXT taping match of the year so far. And these guys put it all on the line, and then it ends up with the bro mission, and Matt Riddle actually beat Drew Gulak here. And it was actually a pretty good match out of Matt Riddle. I was very impressed with Riddle out of this one. Obviously, I knew about Gulak, and I've seen his matches before. I know about his submission game. But this, I was very impressed by Matt Riddle in this one. So this was actually a really decent match, and uh, Riddle wins. Uh, and uh, yeah. he, they mentioned that he's still undefeated, so they're still keeping... Uh, undefeated. Bro. <laughs> Bro, until uh, until NXT, uh, the next pay per view where it's Matt Riddle versus Shayna Baszler, and then Matt Riddle's going down. Sorry, so <laughs> the the ruiners of the undefeated streak, Shayna Baszler. So okay, and then uh, we get into the main event. Like I mentioned before, we had Io Shirai, Kari Zayn, Bianca Belair versus three out of the four horsewomen in a six man tag team match. This was decent. I mean, I the match before I think may could have been the main event. Uh, this match, you know, it was it was actually pretty decent for a six woman tag. It would be better than anything on the main roster. I'm just, you know, I'm taking the shot at the main roster for that. Main roster again, take some notes. This is how you do a six woman tag match. Don't give me the boring shit you give us every day in the main roster. This is a pretty good match. Um, it did what it needed. The big thing here was what happened at the end when Bianca Belair was still tagged in. Kari Zane does a big giant Kari Zane elbow drop off the top rope to the outside to take out. Maria Ooh. Shafir and uh, Jasmine Duke. So Bianca Belair is in the ring and she's looking at the down Dana, but then Io Shirai tagged herself in, and Bianca's Uh-oh. like, "What? What are you doing?" And then uh, Io Shirai goes up to the top, does her sick ass moonsault. I freaking love that thing. Or she jumps up to the second rope, then to the top, and then her moonsault, and she pinned. She. And this is the best part. They, the camera angle was perfect. It caught. Io Shirai pinning Shayna Baszler for the one, two, three. And then Bianca, as soon as the three of Bianca Belair goes, <gasps> like, oh my God, she just beat Shayna Baszler when I couldn't even do that on TakeOver. And like, there's this, the crowd's like, oh shit, like, Shayna Baszler just got pinned in the middle of the ring. So Io Shirai wins for, for, for their team. But then, like, the whole time like they're celebrating, Bianca's good looking at her going, like, like, like why did you that, do that? Like I had this, that could have like, been you know, me. I I had this in the bag. Like I was gonna beat her. So this would that was the big thing into this match at the end there. So the whole thing with Bianca Belair getting uh, self tagged out of the match, and uh, Io Shirai ended up picking the victory up over Shannon Baszler, which is huge for Io Shirai. Now she's got something there. But then, exactly. Yeah, Are you so, saying that Io Shirai is now the new EST of NXT? Ooh, I think I, something's going to play a factor here. So I, I think it's 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 tough because I thought Io Shirai and Karzain are still getting, you know, they're getting primed to move on up for the tag team division. So maybe not just yet. So maybe they're they're still going to do something with her in NXT and uh, maybe with the main championship. So mm. uh that was interesting. It makes you think like that was how we ended the show, and I'm going like, okay, how, how do they? What do they go from here? Obviously, we're gonna get an episode of NXT in the next couple weeks where Bianca confronts Io, going like, what do you, man? What do you, do, what did you do that for? I had the match won. You didn't need to tag me in. So uh, I eventually see Bianca turning back to her heel route and uh, mm-hmm. more of a heel Bianca going forward here, which is great. That's uh, I think that's a pretty good move to do in, that, in my case. So uh, yes, good episode of NXT though. Sounds like good. I didn't watch it, guys, but this all yeah. sounds pretty Decent, good. But uh, again, it had its had its had its faults. Uh, Velveteen Dream perfect. picked the middleweight title over the world title. It just it's just it's <laughs> it just be me be, me being picky. Sorry, guys, but that's who that's who I am. So but they have their methods for their madness, Michael. They do. They do. This might lead to something big. So I mean, the Velveteen they, Dream could be going at the like middleweight belt, and it mama could go towards something even bigger. Yeah, big. Mama Mia, big. You never know. I had to play Mama Mia for you right there. I had to. I had to do it. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, so yeah, decent episode of NXT. Very good. Uh, we do have some tweets. 
Ooh. Got some tweets for us this week. Thank you guys for tweeting the show. And like I said before, if you guys want to tweet in the show and have us read any questions or thoughts, just tweet using the hashtag AskTheNext, and we'll read them right on the end of the show. So we'll start off with Tila on Twitter, loyal fan of the podcast. Um, she says, I loved Halftime Heat. Yes, we didn't talk about Halftime Heat. No. Uh, it was a fun, fast-paced match. Halftime Heat, to me, was maybe the greatest six-man tag Greatest six man tag team match I've ever seen. Oh, well, that, I, mean, I mean, Vel- it was spot central, but that match was really fucking good. <laughs> uh, I think Velveteen Dream tweeted out that it was the most watched NXT match in the history of of the business. Wow. So that's good. It so. was good. Halftime Heat was the shit. And again, like I said, I've said it earlier in the show, main roster. You want to take notes on how to do a six man tag team match? Give us that, and we will have people impressed with it. Um. So that that was a sick match. Halftime Heat was really good. If you guys missed it, I highly suggest you go and watch the match. They did a whole like marathon of like the greatest NXT matches of all time right leading up to it. And I thought that was pretty cool. Like they put the whole 6-hour video on their YouTube channel. So you guys don't even need the network. Just go over to WWE's YouTube channel and you can catch it. So um yes, Halftime Heat was really good. Uh Datila, I really really enjoyed it. Uh, she also says, I honestly cannot wait for Gargano and Velveteen Dream. That's going to be an amazing match. Yep, we're going to get it in two weeks. Cannot wait for that as well. I cannot wait for next week's uh, Adam Cole and uh, uh, Ricochet match. That should be a really good match as well. She also puts, Drew Gulak had an amazing match against Riddle. What do you think is next for him? I I, I mean, I think it's just like a spot filler for NXT, but I'd love for Gulak to stay in NXT. I think Gulak could really benefit from being in NXT. He's not really doing much in 205 Live. 205 Live's not getting the the views it should be getting. I think a Gulak and his character and his submission-based stuff could do a one, or even if he brings his PowerPoint gimmick to NXT, it can do a lot. I think he'd get a lot of fan base and traction behind him in NXT. So, to me, just see, answering your question, Attila, I think it was just a one-time thing, but I would actually love him to be in NXT. Mm-hmm. I'm the exact same way, and Vince, since he loves this whole entertainment thing, you should have Gulak go back to his old babyface fan favorite PowerPoint presentation gimmick, and then just promote him to SmackDown like they did with Mustafa Ali, and it'll it'll be entertaining. We don't have the fashion files anymore, so we need something entertaining on SmackDown, so bring back the whole PowerPoint gimmick, and he was really good on that gimmick too, and the fans loved it. Just bring it back and then promote him up to, to, to SmackDown. During the superstar shakeup, that's when they should do it. Yeah. I, it yeah. He can get a, a very, very over in NXT, man. He, yeah. he's, that, that gimmick's not, it's just going to fall apart on 205 Live. So, mm-hmm. anyways, uh, we got, uh, thank you for your tweets, Tila, as always. Uh, we Now we got Tiffany, my other co host on the All Elite podcast, uh, tweeting into the show. <sighs> I don't know if I want, I'm going to answer your question, Tiffany, but uh, why would you do, I don't know why you would ask me this. I knew it was coming. She puts, number one, where is your beloved hashtag fuck the finest Kona Reeves? Hmm. I don't know. He's uh, training. So you guys can <laughs> stop hating on his ass and get on the Kona Reeves train. That's where he is. Choo-choo. Kona Reeves is a future <laughs> North American champion. I guarantee it. <laughs> but she says, in within all seriousness, who would you love for him to start a feud with? A Drew Gulak would be sick. Or even uh, if it was a serious feud, uh... Corner Reeves, Corner Reeves, a Keith Lee, a Matt Riddle, you know, someone that's to, to start building him up to get to that championship uh, level. I mean, Corner Reeves, man, it's to me in my eyes has the potential. It's just we have to wait and see with him. Uh, mm-hmm. He's got I, again. I can't really sit there and think of a few because we've only seen him a couple of times. So. I don't know. I think it works. I hope we actually see him soon because the Kona Reeves gimmick, I think, is pretty good. Especially now that you don't have EC3 there mm-hmm. anymore. He he can fill in for that spot that EC3 was supposed to be, like the, the cocky, rich, arrogant guy going around. So, you know, EC3 can fill in for that what EC3 – or Kona Reeves can fill in for what EC3 was going to do in NXT and what he started in NXT. So mm-hmm. that's my opinion. Yep. I actually saw Tiffany's uh, tweet, and I actually have an actually pretty good pick on who I think – Kona Reeves should face next, all jokes aside. Are you ready, Kyle? Okay. Now, a lot of you listening in, whether you hate or love Kona Reeves, if you hate Kona Reeves, you might actually cringe on my answer. But I actually have a pretty good explanation on why I say this person. I think Kona Reeves should, and hold your hate for five seconds, 
Coterie should feud with Alistair Black next. Now, here's my Ooh. explanation. Here's, here's the thing. Before all the hates come into the live chat right now, look at Alistair Black and what happened with Velveteen Dream. I got to be completely honest. I was not a big fan of Velveteen Dream before he had his feud with Alistair Black. I thought the gimmick was kind of dumb. I thought he was like a prince wannabe, and he wasn't getting a lot of screen time. His wrestling was okay. His mic skills was okay. But look at what happened. They built the feud. People knew who Velveteen Dream was after the feud. Mm -hmm. They put on the match of the year, and now look at Velveteen Dream now. Mm -hmm. You know, look at that. And Kona Reeves, he can do the exact same thing, but he's going to have to work just as hard as Velveteen Dream did. He can be in a feud with Aleister Black, but he's really got to like bring said, everything. He can yeah. be that, that EC3 guy. He can be that. There's, there's the, the opportunity is there for him to do that. So. <laughs> I'm looking at the live chat right now. Everyone's already yeah. hating the fact I said I was <laughs> black. Well, no, here's the thing. Okay, guys, logically, look at everything that happened with Velveteen Dream with his feud with Alistair Black. But the thing, the thing about that is, Kyle, you saw it. Velveteen Dream worked his ass off. He, it's this isn't a one-sided thing. It's a two-sided thing. Velveteen Dream had to work just as hard. It was a, it was a match, match of the year. It was voted match of the year by NXT. It won the award. But that just means that Kona Reese, he's going to have to work real, real hard to build that heel character. And his matches, honestly, are okay for TV. But at TakeOver, if he faces Aleister Black, he really has to put on the freaking show mm -hmm. to a point where it's got to be like match of the year. Mm -hmm. But like Kyle said, I love – I actually really like Kona Reeves' gimmick. I love, I love those type of gimmicks between him, EC3, was it um, – Alberto Del Rio, John Morrison, those rich, <laughs> well, no, those rich characters, yeah. I really much enjoy. Mm -hmm. He can do it, um, and it's just going to take some time. He's yeah, really got to work real the hard. Finest everything. He wears the finest thing. I'm going to wear that championship, go. and I'm going to make that the finest championship. So, like, the gimmick could work. So he just needs to have the right feud, and I actually like that idea. So it could work, guys. You got to give Connery a chance. You can't just hate on a guy because he's what had two or three matches, and you hate the way he dresses. Come on, guys. That's that's uh, that's arrogant. You gotta stick with Conor Reeves, man. Give him time. Uh, bear in mind, I want to bring up the fact he never debuted as a babyface. Now, if you're if you debuted as a babyface and people hate you, that's bad. He's mm -hmm. always been a heel, and I will compare it to someone like. Well, this is kind of the opposite of what I mean. Roman Reigns. If people boo you and they hate you, and you're a heel, you're doing a good job, mm -hmm. guys. Conor Reeves is technically a heel, and everyone in the live chat right now hates him and boo him. He's doing a good job He's as doing a heel. His then. Job. Yeah. He's doing his job. Now, yeah. if he was a baby face, then that'd be a different story. He'd be the Roman Reigns of NXT. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't go that far, but no, Kona Reeves. It's not going that direction. <laughs> he, can, he, he, can, he can get there, and mm -hmm. he, he, he's got to try. A lot of this stuff, honestly, I can tell you right now, just like Velveteen Dream, is a lot of these guys in NXT going up to Triple H and saying, hey, Triple H, I have an idea. I want to try this. And Triple H will always usually go, all right, let's run with it and see you where this goes but if you don't have any ideas to help you get on tv and to push your character triple h is not going to give you the screen time so exactly. what kona Reeves is doing kona think of something go to triple mm -hmm. h run it by him if you want to face alistair black i'm pretty sure alistair black is is down to giving anyone a chance schedule's so. free call him out schedule, <laughs> schedule's call free out. He's, <laughs> kona's doing nothing he's got free time so mm -hmm. go ahead and do it right. so yeah thanks for your tweets ladies and gentlemen uh I, into the final thoughts of the show. Um, I think NXT is going to be interesting the next couple of weeks leading into the next set of tapings. Got a championship match in two weeks, main roster. Well, you know, we'll see if it's fresh enough to continue its uh, downward pace and try to get up from it. And hopefully it don't get canceled from Fox. That's, uh, that's all I got to hope for them. Uh, yeah, ooh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, other than that, guys, um, as for upcoming weeks of the show, I really want to do the Slammies. Like, I, I know it's probably going to be very mm -hmm. late for us to do that, but... Uh, I really want to do something. It's tough just because with the upcoming weeks of NXT, like they're so they look so good, man. Like it's it's hard not to talk about it. It might have to be a side episode. We might have to do the podcast as well, and also do the the, the slammies on uh, another episode. Yeah. You might get a double dose of us on a week, so that's fine with me. So uh, we'll try to work that out for you guys. Um, but other than that, guys, like I said before, make sure you are. Uh, subscribing and following everywhere uh, subscribing to us on YouTube especially youtube.com slash NHBWR hitting the little bell icon and the uh, yeah hitting the bell icon for all upload updates guys make sure you're also hitting the subscribe button you can also follow the network it's got its own Twitter page NHBWN uh, NHBN sorry NHB network on Twitter <laughs> uh, for, for all network updates from all the other shows 
And uh, it, the network's got a lot of plethora of shows for you guys. It's got UK wrestling content. It's got uh, retro content where the, the boys over at Lowdown Show Retro are doing uh, retro Raw reviews and pay-per-view reviews. It's also got AEW coverage now uh, for you guys all wanting to know all about the All Elite uh, leading up to this growing new brand with myself and Tiffany. And you have this show, the, the next podcast, talking to you guys about giving you a main roster recap and talking about the A show in our eyes, and that is NX. So lots of content for you guys on the network, so make sure you are subscribed to it. And uh, make sure you are also following this show's Twitter account, uh, The Next Pod, and following myself at Real Kyle Masters. You can see in the top there, and then Michael Chow on uh, top of him, at Michael Chow TV on Twitter. Uh, so make sure you guys are following us uh, everywhere on there. And if you guys want to listen to us on the go, we are available to listen to on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Spreaker.com slash NHBWP is where we are always live, and you can listen to us on the go as well. So download that free app for all Android and Apple devices. And now we're newly on Spotify. So Ooh. we are on. We've made it to the Spotify. We got approved to be on there, so we are available on Spotify. So look up the No Holds Bar Network, and everywhere or for all our content will be put on Spotify as soon as it's posted on Spreaker. So, uh, other than that, guys, that is going to wrap it up for episode 15 of the next podcast titled North American Dream, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, as always, the self-proclaimed greatest host and the uh, CEO of the No Holds Bar Network, uh, Kyle Masters, and I'm always joined by my co-host. He is the host that runs the West Coast, Hollywood, Michael Chow. The realist. <laughs> and the finest. <laughs> no, no. Hey, whoa, I don't want to associate myself with that guy. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> but guys, we're here and always reminding you to keep it on the lowdown.